that I try to on Ramadan is to finish the whole Quran. And I want this Ramadan to be a time where I feel like I've given it my all. The month of unity, the month of try to do all these good good deeds that sometimes throughout the year you're busy, you don't think about it. In Ramadan you try to bring all the goodness. This is all new experiences for me. So I have no idea what Ramadan would be like with the large family. It is a period of time that uh, focus the person's attention on God. My life lead me up to college. I met my wife. At the time she wasn't my wife, I saw her. I wanted to talk to her. I talked to her in the first five minutes. I asked her, so what's your religion? Shocked her. She said, Islam. I said, what's Islam? It's, it's such a cleansing and such a rewarding and spiritual feeling and, and an endeavor to do. You know, I, I even get people at, on campus or at work, you know, asking me, you know, different questions on, you know, oh, um, how come you're not eating? And, and it does, it brings up a form of, you know, dialogue on Ramadan. Nobody knows that you're fasting except for Allah. I mean, nobody knows if you went around the corner and you took a snack of uh, Snickers or <laughs> a bite of a Subway sandwich or something, you know. Control our desires. Find a way to connect to God. Fast together as a community because a community that fasts together supports each other. All of these beliefs you can find in Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. Not only can you find them, I think you couldn't be Islamic, Christian, or Jewish without having those beliefs. The son of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, may peace be upon him, to begin breaking the fast or having breakfast with a date and some water. So, inshallah, I will exhibit how this is done. Mm. It's not only a time to celebrate what God has given me or my family, it's a time to celebrate what God gives all of us. Since that day our lives are not the same. Their dad always set rules that, you know, you have to be good, you have to do, you know, uh, you have to treat everybody in a very nice way, be respectful and all these teachings. And all of a sudden, this guy who's like this, he's behind bars, you know. And the first question I got from my kids was, why? What did Baba do, you know? We know that, that he never did anything wrong. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And he's the one who asked me, so what is your religion? And I said, I'm a Muslim. What is Muslim? He said, Muslim is someone whose religion is Islam. And so what is Islam? So I told him Islam is peace. I said, what is that peace? That God is uh, unique, God doesn't start, you know, and doesn't have an end. And he was just like looking at me, and it's like, that's the God I'm looking for. They gave me a copy of Quran, Muhammad Tiktal, took it home, Friday night. I read it, and I said, my God, this is what I've been looking for. And I read the whole Quran in one weekend. Three days, didn't sleep, I drank 10 pots of coffee, and I asked, subhanAllah, I'm a Muslim. God asked the Muslim community to fast during the month of Ramadan uh, from sunrise to sunset. And so this was a way in which Muslims could submit their body and their bodily desires to God. If one observes what God ordains, there are, to use the language of labor, fringe benefits also, or contingency benefits. Fasting is, has been recommended throughout the ages. Uh, Muslims have it, Jews have it, Christians have it, Hindus have it. Almost every religion recommends fasting. Uh, even in the uh, American Indian tradition, they have fasting. Uh, the benefits are quite a few. I think if we look at it carefully, 
benefits definitely outweigh the risks that we take when we fast. It gives our mentally, we are much more alert, our senses are much more improved, our well-being improved, we can get a lot more work done. I mean, I notice in my office, if I'm fasting, I can go the whole day, get so much more done, and I have enough time to do my other things too. It's amazing to me that Muslims can go a whole month without eating during the day. I remember watching um, one of my favorite basketball players, Hakeem Olajuwon, going through Ramadan as a player in the NBA. That's amazing. It's, it's a, fasting is a purification of the body from materialism and elevating the spirit. It's like shining the mirror. And the mirror, if you shine it, to shine it, and you can have a good reflection. Being divorced is uh, really is not uh, is not easy. Uh, never been easy. It's uh, something that I would never recommend to anybody to do. Uh, when you go home, uh, you know you're that your kids are about five minutes, seven minutes away from you. Uh, but at the same time, you know you you can't be with them every day. I am the newest addition to the Middlebis family. Alhamdulillah, uh, the first ever of my breed. No. <laughs> It's nice, I could definitely say our first time eating iftar together, us cooking and, you know, assisting each other with cooking and it was, it was definitely a, a new feeling that I, I've never felt in Ramadan. And... It's probably my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I feel like he's telling me, you're trying so hard, I feel like I have so much energy. I'm just not directing that energy into the one who deserves it the most, you know just focusing on me and him and focusing on where I'm going after this this whole hectic life of mine is done you know after I finish college and you know get married and have kids and watch them grow up I mean one day I'm gonna leave this this place and I just want to feel somewhat content if I were to leave today that I would be ready to face him The Prophet emphasized so much kindness to neighbors, whether they are Muslims or not. And I'm very pleased to see uh, that in the last few years, there has been a practice to provide or invite friends and neighbors to share uh, the experience of breaking the fast. And this has helped them understand their Muslim spirituality. They have not fasted, at least they can eat something with us, so they understand what we have done during the daytime. I'm impressed by the way that mosques invite people of other faiths to come to celebrate the end of each day's fast. I think it would be interesting and powerful if Christian churches and Jewish synagogues and temples offered the same kind of invitations to uh, non-Jews to participate in their fast. I think their Christians and Jews have something to learn. When it comes to religion, there's nothing like America because it's only really, I think, in America where you see this religious dialogue, where you can see Christians, Muslims, Jews, Buddhists, various religions coming together to discuss issues, and you see it often. Some of the lessons to be learned from the month of Ramadan is that the month of fasting is training to be at peace with the Creator, at peace with oneself, and to be at peace also with all the creation of God, whether humans, animals, vegetation, or even the inanimate objects even in this universe. In fact, this is the definition of Islam and Ramadan is a training to be a true Muslim.